Naval Diving Unit. Warriors of the Deep. Able to swim faster, run further, and fight harder. From the sea, air, and land. Our bold and daring divers, with their unwavering will-do attitude, play a critical role in the defense of our maritime nation. To understand how the Naval Diving Unit has transformed over the years to become the elite fighting force it is today, we need to go back in time to the birth of the unit, 50 years ago. In 1959, the British Far East Fleet Clearance Diving Team was established to provide diving support for the British forces based in Singapore. However, when the team withdrew in 1971 together with the British forces, they left a void which needed to be urgently filled. A bold group of pioneers was thus called upon to rebuild this critical capability from scratch. One morning, a call from the commander. He said, uh, come up to HQ and speak to the minister. The first thing Dr. Gould said, I need frogmen. Can you train them? I said, Yes, sir. So with that, we draw up the training plan. And we need to start from basic to ultimately qualified diver. When we started the diving centre, we had nothing. Zero. Not even a table or a desk. On 12 December 1971, the SAF Diving Centre, the forerunner of the Naval Diving Unit, was born. Out of the 200 who applied from within the Navy, only 14 were selected, with 10 successfully graduated from the course. My aim was to get these men to help me to train future divers. Our job scope as the first naval divers was quite wide. Everything from ship husbandry below the waterline, explosives and ordnance disposal, and also the recovery of drowned victims. As there were a number of occasions where bystanders would comment, why would someone want to do this sort of a job? Our response would be, why not do this sort of job? In 1983, NDU was put to her first test. Our divers were activated during the Sentosa cable car tragedy for a difficult search and recovery mission. Faustin Hogan was one of the divers tasked to perform the search. It's a do or die thing, and as far as I'm concerned, that was the attitude that we took down with us when we went to retrieve the victims who were trapped in the cable car. I went in, into the water, we would hold the line with one hand, stretch our hand out with a torchlight, and swim this way, in the hope that the sweep of the torch, right, would catch something shiny. Or... Before my eyes, lo and behold, I saw the, a cable car. With experience under its belt, NDU's scope of responsibilities began to grow. In order to meet these increasing demands, NDU took in its first batch of full-time national servicemen in 1988. They graduated as Batch 001 UDT. Previously fully staffed by regular servicemen, this steady stream of NSFs allowed NDU to better support the SAF in a wider variety of operations. In the late 1980s, Colonel Lao Bok Thiam was given a mission to initiate the development of the Navy's maritime special operations capabilities. In 1989, the Special Warfare Group was formed, a group that was equally competent on land, in the air, and at sea. We started out with uh, 13 strong guys, and it was handpicked from the regular force. I was one of the 13 guys we built from scratch. Today, we are a full-fledged MSO operators. In order to benchmark its own MSO operators against some of the world's best, NDU regularly sends out divers overseas to attend some of the most demanding professional courses to train alongside the world's elite. Our divers have consistently performed well at these courses, flying Singapore's flag high while building NDU's own MSO capabilities. Over the years, NDU has deployed extensively for various operations, both locally and overseas.
1997. Search for Silk Air MI-185. Two thousand and four, Operation Flying Eagle, humanitarian and disaster relief efforts following the Boxing Day tsunami. Two thousand and three to two thousand and eight, Operation Blue Orchid, multinational reconstruction efforts in Iraq. Two thousand and nine to two thousand and fourteen, Operation Blue Sapphire multinational counter-piracy operations in the Gulf of Aden. 2018, DPRK USA Singapore Summit, securing the waters off Sentosa Island. In these 50 years, the warriors of the deep have transformed from a simple unit into a versatile formation capable of a wide spectrum of operations. But what ultimately makes a naval diver? The single most important aspect of being a diver is that sense of humility. Because you can be the toughest guy out there, that mystique of the frogman from the sea, the special breed of men, but without the extension, without leveraging the larger conventional fighting system that forms the Navy as well as the SAF, actually the influence of a diver can only go so far because we certainly do not fight alone. I wish that for NDU we would continue to be able to help people um, in ways that, uh, that no one else can. To me, what it means to be a naval diver is to be able to form strong bonds between me and my batchmates and be able to carry out whatever operations and tasks that is given to us. It takes guts to be a naval diver. We will do the job regardless of the challenge. Being a naval diver, you get to earn the right to be one every single day. To be a naval diver, one needs absolute courage to face uncertainties in our challenging environment. What it means to be a naval diver is mental strength. As our instructors like to put it, to become that post to frogmen, it requires beyond just physical strength. All the sacrifice we make daily may be tough, but this is to show the world that Singapore does not take its defence lightly. Nothing, nothing, nothing stands in our way. Nothing stands in our way!